Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you my new studio here at Praxis Art Space. This studio is part of a residency program. During this residency, I've made a commitment to my art practice and I've quit working full time. For today's video, I want to focus on giving you a tour of my new studio, how I've set it up and peeks into my current work and future work. So let's just jump into it. On the eastern wall, as soon as you walk in, there is a bunch of random things pinned up. These include some new experimental paintings that I've just placed there to kind of look at and consider as I'm working, as well as my calendar and a to-do list. As an emerging artist, I'm often running applications for different grants and exhibitions and prizes, so I need to have a calendar to keep all those due dates in place. Now, I normally use my iCal on my computer, but I also wanted to have something that was hanging on the wall. Now in the corner, I have Mr. Pac-Man. This arcade machine was in storage in my bedroom for the last two years. It was previously exhibited with Queer Zone at Mod, and I decided to bring it out and present to my studio for something a bit more interesting to look at, and to also give it a chance to be seen, if only by five people. <laughs> Against the southern wall, I've got my bookshelf, which was a hand-me-down from an old roommate. Rather than books, I store the majority of my art supplies here in plastic tubs. As part of my personal life, I consider myself a minimalist. This involves living minimally and with intention and trying not to have too much material goods in my life. However, working as a multidisciplinary artist, it often means I have to have a lot of art supplies on hand. In the past, I've either sold, donated or thrown away old art supplies because they would take up lots of room and just bog me down. Through experience, I've learned that when I remove art supplies from my life, I tend to require it in the following week in a moment of freak inspiration or in a few months from now. So rather than wasting time and money repurchasing tools and materials, I tend to just keep it all on hand, at least neatly. This is one of the main challenges working with many different mediums. Sometimes you need video game parts. Sometimes you need steel, acrylic paint, or a staple gun. There are times I wish I worked with just one medium for simplicity. Now, on top of my bookshelf, there is a spider plant. I brought it in because I just wanted to have some life in my studio. And I also wanted to just kind of take some of the plants out of my house into my uh, studio. Sitting on top of a collection of drop sheets, I have a large clear container that's filled with different paints. On the top shelf, I've stored mostly old art prints as well as some packaging material and holographic paper, which I've found very inspiring over the last few months. The second shelf has my experimental materials tub, a selection of canvases, and my Japanese color dictionary. Part of this residency is about getting back to painting. This dictionary is amazing for color combinations and I've started to use them with a few of my new paintings. The tub is really a collection of hodgepodge materials, including pink satin, which I use for some paintings for an exhibition. I also have staple guns, hole punches, grommet presses, and holographic stickers. Now, the second shelf, I've got my MISC art supplies, this tub, and my stock for my pin store. I sell a selection of pop culture and queer pins. A link to this store can be found below and the miscellaneous tub is pretty empty. After some reorganization, I realized I barely need this tub. It just holds some sketchbooks, sandpaper, and plastic lunch bags. I also have a black tote bag. While in the studio for long periods of time, I get pretty hungry and I try to keep these snacks as a backup so I can avoid spending money. Really, as an artist, I try to keep my costs low when I can. On the next tub, I've got my electronics tub. This is full of controllers, a Wacom tablet, and LED lighting. And the last tub is my installation hardware tub. The name, as it suggests, is really a bunch of different things I'd use for an installation. This includes chains, ropes, wire, fishing line, nails, bolts, and screws. In the bottom of this bookshelf, there is a large toolbox full of brushes and paint supplies, as well as a power drill. On the right, there is some steel legs and a wooden box for an incomplete sculpture that I'm hoping to finish during this residency, as well as a basket full of more electronics. Now on this yellow wall, I've also got a painting called the Coco Desert. Now this is part of my series called Neo Glitch City. 
Now these paintings are a bit special because rather than just being a painting, they also function as something else. In my exhibition for Neo Glitch City, which was presented at 7th Gallery in Melbourne, as well as Collective Haunt in Norwood, I also made a video game which was presented. Now sometimes in these video games you might get a little bit confused and need a map, and that's where these paintings come in. So these paintings are an aesthetic map where I consider video game design as well as composition, but also I try to translate those into video game levels. What do you think of this idea? Using a painting as a video game map. Now the Western wall was very scrappy when I got it. This wall is primarily going to be used for hanging my artwork. I really wanted to have a wall to hang up artwork for display, review and consideration, but also for photography. Now the paintings on this wall are from my exhibition Flat World 64, which was presented at the mill. The paintings for this exhibition were inspired by Super Nintendo 64 collectathon games. Now, I'll give an example of what a collectathon is. When you play Super Mario 64, it can be hard to understand where to go without clear markers. Super Mario 64 used coins, power stars, and extra lives to help show those locations that can be reached. In doing this and collecting those items, the player starts to become more familiar with the virtual landscapes. I wanted to do this within each painting, so there are a series of, paint of diamonds to try and look for and find. And I hope that by looking for these diamonds and finding them, in a way you start to become familiar with the painting's landscape. Now, this desk is where all the magic happens. The left side is for digital and the right side is for painting. The desk was supplied by Praxis Art Space. The desk actually has an inbuilt light box, which is really cool. However, I doubt I'll be using it during this residency. Under the desk is my packaging storage. I try to keep all my packaging for my installations so I can reuse them. Environmentalism is a complicated conversation for artists, but I really want to avoid unnecessary plastic waste where I can. So I try to reuse packaging materials and where possible use blankets and fabric rather than bubble wrap. On the left, this is my typical setup for when I'm working on just digital work where I'll use my 27 inch monitor for working on and the MacBook screen for either reference material or in this case, to watch a YouTube video while painting. Also floating on my desk, I tend to keep a pencil case, notebook, sketchbook, and whatever book I'm currently reading. At the moment, it's the Smartest Guide, which is a really good uh, artist resource. On the right hand of my desk, it acts as essentially a wet zone, hence why the drop sheet's down. So at the moment I'm working on these paintings. Behind my desk, I have a collection of holographic paintings. These paintings are made of MDF wood that's been wrapped in holographic paper and then stickers applied with consideration for composition, materiality and texture. Some of them are really purposefully messy. I've got a taste for really cursed and ugly images at the moment. Now I've had these for a few months and they aren't finished, but I'm unsure of what they need if you have any ideas, let me know. And with that, we've completed my studio tour. Thank you for joining us. If you're interested in getting more information or perhaps purchase inquiries about any of the work you've seen here, please visit my website for more information or message me on social media. The applicable links are in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video of my studio tour, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Now let's get out of here and have a great day. Bye.